My name is Mark Paris. I'm the Vice President of Engineering for Kairos. I've got 40 years in the nuclear industry. I was lucky enough to start in 1981 at the Fast Flux Test Facility as an operator. I ended up spending 30 years at Hanford, the manager of the B reactor, which is the first full-scale reactor where Enrico Fermi discovered xenon poisoning. I got to open up as a national historic landmark for public tours. But I'm reminded of what we can do if we put our mind to it. They broke ground on that reactor in October of 1943, and it went critical in September of 1944 and ran for 26 years. Got to do a few more things at Hanford. I constructed a new liquid waste treatment facility, was in charge of the spent fuel cleanup, which at one time had 80% of DOE's radionuclides, and then decided I wanted to dedicate what I had left of my career to commercial nuclear power because I passionately think it's important for us. I spent eight years on the new scale project. I was responsible for engineering to submit the design certification that was just approved. And then in May of 2019, I moved to Kairos. And this is the best job I've ever had. Kairos Power's mission is to enable the world's transition to clean energy with the ultimate goal of dramatically improving people's quality of life while protecting the environment. In order to achieve that, we realize that we have to provide uh, technology that's affordable and safe. Pretty new company founded in 2016. We've ramped up to 158 employees, very engineering focused. We're privately funded schedule driven to deliver a demonstration plant by 2030 or earlier. We also are very cost conscious and realize that we're going to have to compete in an aggressive marketplace. Kairos is Greek for the right or opportune moment. And the founders recognized this incredible peak of natural gas build out in the early 2000s was going to result in another peak of generation retirements, probably around 2035 or so. And we want to have a technology that's ready to answer that upcoming peak. We have to compete with natural gas, basically, today. Things don't change in tough market conditions. So we're targeting at least a competitive dispatchable uh, target of $50 per megawatt hour. And we think we can do maybe a little bit better than that, probably in the nth of a kind. Our technology is based on particle fuel, triso, flybe, coolant. And then I love this picture because that's my FFTF core before it was filled with sodium. Those two, the fuel and coolant combination allows us to have a functional containment so we can have low pressure reactor vessels, low pressure systems, and we can avoid costly containment structures. We've done quite a bit of design work on the full scale reactor, which would be a 320 megawatt thermal, about 140 megawatt electric. We haven't really designed all the BOP yet, so we don't quite know all of the parasitic loads. 100 degrees C delta T with an outlet of 650, probably about six inches of water or so, cover gas pressure, and we need HALU fuel. The main focus of all that we do is to build cost certainty. And in order to build cost certainty, we think we need technology, licensing, supply chain, and build certainty. And from that, we build our work streams to Kairos, which are the design, test, licensing, fuel development, salt development. This sequence of non-nuclear development facilities, rapid analysis, prototyping, iterative design lab, or R lab, salt handling lab, or S lab, the component testing facility, or T facility, which would be full-scale components, and then the user facility, or U facility, which we plan to be a full-scale replica of our commercial nuclear primary system, including the civil structural. What we've done so far, Alameda headquarters in California is a 70-some-year-old airplane hangar that we refurbished. There's a couple of pictures of what it looked like. We built it into a really cool office and lab complex that's shown on the right. Our rapid lab was commissioned in the fall of 2018. On the left shows a picture from the top floor of the office that looks out over the testing floor with some manufacturing. We've got our ETU demonstration experiment, salt loop down on the lower right. And then on the right, we've got mostly thermal hydraulic, but water and oil scaled experiments that have been working over the last couple of years. So the etude is the engineering test unit demonstration experiment, and it's a scaled water mock-up of our engineering test unit. It includes a pump, pebble circulation system, control rod insertion. There's a scaled reactor vessel. Of course, it's non-nuclear for ETU. This is where we're experimenting with how to insert pebbles and how to withdraw pebbles, how rods will be inserted, and then how the pump's going to work. September of 2020, we commissioned, and this was somewhat delayed because of COVID, commissioned and put into operation our salt lab. We are now melting flybe in the S lab in Alameda. 
And then on the right is our New Mexico expansion. We call that KP Southwest. It's a 110,000 square foot facility that was going to be a solar panel manufacturing facility that never got off the ground. We are looking to develop vertical integration manufacturing within this facility, put into place graphite manufacturing here, graphite machining, and we just broke ground on construction of our T facility, which will be an adjacent kind of an annex to this facility in New Mexico. Cairo's power is taking a different approach to nuclear. We think nuclear has to be done really kind of drastically different than it has in the past. And in the past, we've had long development cycles where you make a lot of paper that gets increasingly more complex and intricate and harder to change. You probably hook up with an EPC sometime after you've got almost designed, close to finished. You find out that the cost estimate is undesirable. And so you do a power up rate to try and improve your dollars per megawatt ratio. And then you go out to the field, uh, finally, with paper that's really hard to change because you have a license now, and you find problems about how you can't build it the way you thought you could. We try to break that down into small sprints, very near term, hardware developed, hardware focused, so that we can really learn by doing, learn fast, learn cost control, and also to expose real risks rather than kind of try to contemplate what risks might be there and then track a whole bunch of them. Some of them come to pass and some of them don't. And of course, SpaceX come to mind as the very successful company that has completely disrupted the industry, very much like our industry. And you see down in the lower left, they had Falcon 1 and then the Falcon 9 Block 5, you know, just recently completed manned flight. We ask ourselves, what's our Falcon 1? Flight four is shown in the Marshall Islands, Omelik Island. What's similar for us? It's the engineering test unit. So the engineering test unit shown compared to our full-scale reactor is a non-nuclear, unenriched fly wetted isothermal test that will test our vessel, including our graphite internals, our salt pump, pebble handling, and control elements. And it's scale relevant to both the KPX commercial reactor and to our test reactor, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And this really helps us to develop our supply chain and improve our design and testing programs, uh, give us experience in operations of a large-scale fly facility, and will give confidence in our ability to build and operate high-temperature fly systems. It's not really just a test of our technology and our components, but it's building muscle of our company and our people and our programs and systems and how we can be successful in actually putting hardware into operation. Progress on ETU is going along quite nicely. The design is just about done. This will go in the T facility in KP Southwest. Procurement is underway for uh, major components. Our overall development program is shown here. We've done etude. We're going to the engineering test unit, non-nuclear. A new twist is that we're building a test reactor which would be up to 50 megawatt thermal, no electrical production, that'll be on the scale of the engineering test unit. And we're doing this really to show that Kairos can deliver low-cost nuclear heat. The next sequence then is a non-nuclear U facility. It's a full scale of the commercial version of our plant, including all of the primary, which would be safety-related structural supports in the building really help us reduce that risk of going to the field and not being able to build what we had designed and flesh that out and give confidence that we'll we'll have build certainty. The next deployment would be KPX and X, meaning whatever a customer wants, two, four units grouped together. So our schedule is shown here. Uh, We're in the middle of engineering test unit. We've started design of Hermes test reactor. We've done a lot of design on the KP, the full-scale KPX. So a lot of this translates to just a smaller scale. Then we'll go into U facility and then to commercial. Our intention is to have a commercial plant ready 2030 or earlier. Hermes criticality, we're targeting about 2025. U facility construction would be 2025, 2026 timeframe. How are you synthesizing your FLIB salt? We've developed a relationship with Materion, who's, you know, probably one of the few providers, if not the only provider of beryllium fluoride. Do you have plans for managing the chemical and physical hazards associated with beryllium? We've worked with Materion, who has incredible experience dealing with beryllium. We've put in place beryllium handling practices in our S-Lab at a smaller scale in the Alameda. 
and all those things are being translated into the design of the ETU and the T facility. What is the status for acquiring enriched lithium? We're working on that quite uh, vigorously, and we think we have it in hand. It is truly inspirational. Cairo starts every one of its presentation by reminding people of its vision. That's a wonderful way of going. Thank you all. Thank you, Dave.